My name is Linda Abercrombie and my maiden name was Thorsine, which I'm very proud to say. Um, I went to university here. I was one of the early, early grads, a 61 to 64 grad. So I started the second year that the university was actually open as a campus. Although we were the second class on this campus, we were the very first class to have graduated having taken all of their years on this campus. And so we were, we were the first class to have our convocation at the Jubilee Auditorium and not a convocation in Edmonton, which was very, very exciting. But we were also in the thick of all this March for Autonomy. So a small group of students got together very secretly, lots of work in planning this, because after the big ceremony upstairs, everybody came to the lower level of the, of the Jubilee to have, of course, in those days, there was certainly not a glass of wine, but to have tea and coffee and some little goodie. The, so the, the cups were all placed on the saucers. And, thank you, Don. <laughs> and I, this is not actually from the ceremony, but this is exactly what people saw. On, there was a whole table of white cups and saucers. And as people picked up their cup of tea or coffee, this is what they saw. Autonomy for U of C. Autonomy for U of C. And believe me, for days and weeks, there were, people, there were people that were not happy about that, that we should not have done that. But we thought that was a great coup. It was really just such a great campus to have a start on, really great. And for somebody starting like me, um, in the second year of students, we were only 800 when we started, and we were the same size in total as the population of Crescent Heights High School, where I came from. So I don't know, it's only my guess, but I think I was not the only person who had felt like a bit of a, a geek, as we used to say, in high school, who came into this wonderful setting and found that that was no impediment or deterrent to being just fully engaged in this exciting, incredible, ever-changing atmosphere that was going on at the university at the time, to being member of student council and to doing so many different activities and meeting so many great student friends who had the same things in common. So those were wonderful early years. I think, you know, we were the ones who remember all those great activities like uh, color night and uh, uh, the, the queen ball. Uh, we did the gauntlet and the tally stick. We had Bermuda shorts day. Um, we cheered on our dinosaurs. My father was um, instrumental in so many important things that happened in the university just after that time. He was the first main chairman of the Board of Governors after autonomy was attained in 67. And he remained in that position from 67 to 1970. In Edmonton, uh, he graduated at the top of his class in 1939 from the Department of Engineering. And he was awarded both the Association of Professional Engineers of Alberta Prize that year and the Engineering Institute of Canada Prize in that very same year. So he was outstanding to begin with. And as my family will all um, completely agree with, he was a humble farm boy. He, he, he was so humble and he was so easy to get along with and he could make things happen without any hostility without any bossing around. The government convinced him between 41 and 45 to start teaching engineering at U of A. There were war, war vets that are already starting to come back. And as you can imagine, most of his class, the students were older than he was. And he was the youngest professor of engineering in Edmonton. And he was the youngest full-time prof and administrative head of the of the um, Department of Civil Engineering, as well as president of the teaching staff. So it sort of gives you, it gives us an idea of what kind of background he came from. And then we moved to Calgary. He had, he had kept, he had made some big business contacts in Calgary that he had done some work with. Why did he leave that university life and go into business? 
Yes, why? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, as, as he said, to quote him, there's a lot more to life than living and being comfortable. You have to get a feeling of satisfaction out of what you're doing. And in another context, he had said, everyone has the responsibility to give the time and talent that they have. And that's how he always felt about everything. I'm very honored on behalf of my family. I have four brothers, I'm so honored. We all agree that we think his proudest moment was getting the medical school started. And he's not mentioned in a lot of the literature, but at the time he was president of the Board of Governors. And he was also president of the, um, of the, facu of the building faculty for what was going to be happening with the School of Medicine. And there was a lot of difficulty between the university and the government in Edmonton. The government in Edmonton had planned that that money was going to go to, to upgrade the Faculty of Medicine in Edmonton, and we were not going to have one. Well, number one, that was not going to be okay with him. Uh, and this is completely hearsay, and you can cut this out if you like, but he let the government know that if we did not get the faculty here, he felt it was so critical to have it here, if we did not get it, that he would be resigning and he would be doing it publicly and talking about why. And I, you know, he was highly regarded by the government, obviously. He was the one who was brought up to Edmonton for the university's commission work. Um, and again, when they, when they finally said yes and offered the money, he said, no, this isn't, this isn't going to work. We need to be one of the top faculties, as we indeed are. The faculty of, me of medicine in Edmonton, is sp uh, in University of Alberta, is spread all over Edmonton. The research and the actual hospital itself and everything is spread all over. And so the idea here was very unique. It was to have all of these, all of the research treatment centers under one roof and not have it spread out. And indeed, that's what was okayed and that's what happened. And that is, that is unique.